Hello there, everybody. Welcome back. I am sure you're familiar with what's going on right now. Uh, well, first off, thank you for the support and welcome to another installment of the Weird of the Week series here on Patreon. Uh, the recent episodes that I've been recording, they got all corrupted, so I'm re-recording stuff at this time, and uh, unfortunately, you know, it, it just happens. Um, so I'm going to retell some of the stories that I was talking about. Um, however, I'm going to condense it a little bit uh, because, you know, my first reaction's kind of gone, but I still thought that they were fun sort of discussions to bring up here, and there's stuff that we don't really cover too much on the main podcast. Um, so the first article that I'm going to be talking about for this episode uh, is titled Cops Encountered a Werewolf Near the River Thames, which, if you're not familiar, is in the UK. Uh, this, of course, comes from Unexplained Mysteries. It's a great service if you guys want to check it out. It's a forum that pretty much posts random mysterious stuff. Uh, I find it fun. Don't go to their actual forum. Just go to their article links. Because the forums are super toxic. Just avoid those. Uh, so this was posted in mid-December at the time of recording. Uh, and the article goes as this. Historic accounts tell the story of two police officers who had a terrifying encounter in Berkshire, uh, in Berkshire, England. According to author and founder Berkshire Police Brian Langston, PC Tom Wilters and PC Lucy Palmer had been out on patrol in the early hours one morning on November 2000 when the incident occurred. So this is a recap article. This original story happened 21 years ago. Uh, the pair had been on their patrol car uh, at Windsire Leisure Pool uh, in Stoville Road when their headlights illuminated what they first described as an enormous wolf-like beast. Uh, Palmer is quoted as saying the following, It looks too big to be a dog and seemed irritated as we disturbed it. It had an odd, uh, odd gait and walked towards the river before it vanished. It was later described as a, uh, or I should say, it was later discovered at the time of you know this story coming out in 2000 that a similar creature was actually spotted in the area 10 years prior by another police officer, uh, police officer Gail Eptag, I could be pronouncing uh, their, their name wrong, uh, who was also on a late night patrol in that area. Uh, I believe it was for like burglary stuff. Uh, so while cycling along the side of the river, she had caught sight of what she initially assumed to be a large shaggy dog, but it quickly turned out to be some sort of large wolf. She is quoted as saying it was too big, for, uh, or I should say, it was so big that my first thought was that it must be a St. Bernard. She goes on to say, as it leapt across the road about 20 feet ahead of me, it was clearly illuminated by the street lighting and I could see it, uh, and I could see it had the appearance of a huge wolf. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that it was solid and real. She even describes it as having uh, a quote eerie or an air of. Oh God, I'm, I can't read right now. I, I'm not dyslexic, but I swear I am. Uh, she even describes it as having an quote air of arrogance and almost human intelligence. And the eyes were described to her as uh, glowing with the intense yellow-green luminosity. Uh, she wraps up this article by saying, uh, quote, It was nothing like any dog I had ever seen. Interesting. Um, so, again, this is not my first reaction to this, but I thought it was something to sort of talk about because we never really talk about werewolves, at least not to my knowledge so far. But I thought it was an interesting story. Uh, there is some credence to it. Uh, you know, like wolves have traditionally yellow or orange eyes to them. So the idea that whatever creature they spotted has glowing yellow, greenish eyes is fairly, you know, that's accurate to a degree. Um, let me see if I don't believe wolves are native to the UK. I could be wrong. Um, Wolves and great bird are thought to be. Yeah, so I think it kind of goes with the idea of like large cats and other stuff in Britain and like England. 
uh, in which they were generally believed to be extinct during like, you know, medieval times, essentially. And they're not around anymore, unfortunately. Uh, they were hunted, they were killed off, they were run out, it doesn't matter. Uh, so it's something that, that uh, you know, I, I think it's still an interesting story. I know that there are historical accounts of there being like cave wolves in the area back during like ancient times. So descriptive wise, there was technically a creature that had that same description that lived in that region of the globe. But like the credibility, yes, it's there. It's three police officers of all people. They're 10 years apart, but it still has that like, we just don't know type quality to it. Uh, there's no evidence that's collected. There's no proof of any sort. Obviously, there's no recordings because this is, you know, the 90s, the 2000. They didn't have cameras on them. So I, I'm going to put a pin in this story. I'm going to do a little bit more digging just because I want to see if there is any more credibility to it in any way or if it has popped up since this point because, again, it's 20 years old. So if there is another account out there, I'm sure it's been talked about since 2000. But I just don't know at this moment. So I'm going to do a little bit of extra research into the matter to sort of see if there's anything that pops up. And if I find anything, I'll attach an addendum to this this episode. So moving forward, we can just check back in on it. But I'll make a quick little announcement here just because it's pretty relevant to what this episode was. One of the episodes that we're going to be doing for the main podcast is going to be relating to British big cats or British alien cats, uh, which is a topic over in the UK of very large feline creatures being spotted out in the wilderness. Uh, it's a story that we talked about briefly back when we were doing YouTube, and it's something that I want to revise because it, it did pretty well, but I d- definitely did not do a lot of research during those like really, really early months. The video itself is like maybe two minutes long. So it could be way longer. It could be way more in depth. I kind of want to make it its own little thing, maybe a two-parter. I'm not sure yet, but we'll see where it goes. I just wanted to make that announcement attached to this episode because, again, it makes sense. But that's, yeah, that's all we have for this installment of Weird of the Week. Uh, it's a bit of a short one, but, again, I already kind of recorded this already. And at least this one was a bit more concise with how I actually came to the approach. Uh, But yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, Again, thank you so much for the ongoing support here over on Patreon. It really does mean a lot. Uh, And if you guys are listening to this on the Patreon platform itself, uh, there will be a link to the actual article that I'm reading. So if you want to check it out yourself, see any of the images they attach, uh, there's not much there. Uh, But if you want to do so, the link is there for you to check out. And again, any addendums to the story that I find, I will be attaching here as well. So again, I hope you guys had a great time. Have a great rest of the holiday season because I think this is being released, uh, I believe, like the 30th or the 29th. Could be wrong. Um, So yeah, I hope you guys have a great time. And I hope to see you guys next week in another installment of Weird of the Week. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Weird of the Week, the exclusive Patreon uh, after show that you guys help support, and it, we got a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, so I'm actually going to be dumping a few extra stories. At, this is the very first one that I am recording because there's a lot of stuff happening. I want to do some catch up from some mishaps from last month, and uh, there's just a lot of interesting stories that I want to cover. So if you are new here or if you haven't listened to this or if I am actually uploading this as a compilation, the Weird of the Week is a bonus series that is uploaded after every traditional weekly episode of the main podcast. It is exclusive here on Patreon. I will do like mini compilations of a collection of series here and there onto the main feed. However, for the most part, it will be exclusive to the uh, to the Patreon uh, for all tiers. It doesn't matter what tier you'd use to support, uh, every single one has access to this series. Uh, and if you are new and you're listening exclusively on Patreon, there is an RSS link that you should have been given when you signed up uh, within the initial message. 
that will have that link that you can plug into whatever podcast listening platform you have. So you can listen on the go. You don't have to listen through your, you know, Patreon stuff, which is kind of finicky, especially if you're on the app. Uh, so yeah, without a further ado, I am going to be reading some stories. Uh, if you have listened to ones in the past, I generally just read off articles that I find that are interesting or newsworthy-esque when it comes to, uh, you know, the bizarre, the weird, uh, and all sorts of the topics that we would normally talk about. And for the first one for this uh, episode, I want to be talking about a weird unidentified animal that was actually located here in Pennsylvania. Most of my stories for this next little batch are coming from unexplainedmysteries.com. Again, it's a great resource, but just avoid the forums because they are toxic as hell. Uh, so I'm just going to read through that we're going to talk about it. A mysterious animal that resembles some sort of dog or coyote has been discovered in the west side of the state. The enigma first presented itself early this week as resident Christina Eve noticed an animal outside her home that appeared to have been lost and shivering in the cold weather. Now this article is coming from late January, just to put in some uh, perspective. Uh, her first thought it was a neighbor's dog, however on closer inspection the animal looked somewhat unusual so she decided to call local wildlife experts for a second opinion. When they examined the animal, they too were unable to determine what it was. It wasn't long before the mystery ended up getting onto local television, and uh, a wildlife uh, rehabilitator named Morgan Barron uh, is actually quoted as saying the following, I honestly can't definitively say what it is, but on the to err on the side of caution, since they can carry rabies, and since it may be a coyote, we have to keep it here, get genetic testing done, and then go from there. I have not seen any updates as to what has happened since then. It's going to take some time, uh, and there's a little video attached. If you guys are interested, check out channel 69, nice, uh, WFMZ, which is kind of the local news uh, of that area of PA. Now, the animal in question, I personally think probably is a coyote or a mixture of a coyote and a dog. It very much aligns with, like, the story of, like, chupacabra sightings down in, like, Texas or New Mexico. But I find it interesting that it happened up here in Pennsylvania because you don't really hear stories of that happening here. Um, if you're unfamiliar with one of the more prevalent theories as to what the chupacabra actually is. The most prevailing theory is that it is a sort of coyote or dog or wolf of some sort that uh, is suffering from mange, which is a skin disease that kind of dries you out. It makes you lose your hair. It causes rashes to break out. And uh, it, it's just a really bad thing. And uh, when it comes to animals, I'm pretty sure humans can get it too. Uh, when it comes to animals, it obviously makes them go uh, hairless, which is very bizarre to look at. Oftentimes, they're very sick, and they're you know solo from their communities, and they look kind of gaunt. Uh, so it makes it look like a weird creature, if you're, especially if you're not familiar with them uh, in your area. And I can totally see why uh, Christina would be freaked out seeing this in the morning. Uh, I definitely would be too. I've see my fair share of wildlife uh, during like the wee twilight hours and uh, let me tell you even though it's an animal that you definitely know what it is um, during that time of day you can very easily be misidentified as something else uh, I've almost stepped on a fox as it was crossing in front of me uh, I've had raccoons wander in front of me I've had owls and hawks come swooping down at me and if you're not paying attention or if you you know, I can't clearly denote what it is. It's very frightening and it's very um, jarring because you're not used to it and uh, it's definitely new. Uh, but I thought this was an interesting thing to talk about and I wanted to cover it. This again, the article was written on January 22nd of this year. However, I cannot find any updates as to what is going on with the DNA testing. Obviously, it's probably backed up, um, and again, my money is probably on the fact that it is a coyote. Apparently, coyotes are up here. I'm pretty sure they're, like, everywhere, pretty much. Um, growing up, I did not know coyotes were this far north. Uh, I think it's a relatively new thing. I don't know. 
Um, but yeah, coyotes are here. Uh, they're actually in Philadelphia too. Like they're in Philly, not like city proper as much, but they're, they're, you know, in South Philly near the airport, there's some like animal reserve areas. They're up in North Philly where, uh, you know, the Wishahickon state park is and the trails and all those areas of woods. But obviously this is in Western PA. So that whole area is a bunch of woods. Most of PA is woods, unless you're like, in Pittsburgh or in a city or like in Philly or something pretty much just woods fields farms and like suburban areas so I am not surprised that there is some sort of coyote population out there or wild you know dog population that got loose from somewhere uh that is just roaming the countryside and one of them just happens to have mange now uh, hopefully it's doing well. Uh, as of what I know, it is still being held by the wildlife experts um, of that town. I don't know what the status will be if they do determine it to be mange. I, I don't know what's going to happen to the dog uh, or the canine, whatever it is. So hopefully, fingers crossed, it's okay. And it's just you know a lost puppy that got found and hopefully going to find a home. Uh, or if it's a coyote, it gets healed and then released back into the the uh, wilderness. Who knows? I don't know. Uh, if there are any updates, like most of these stories, I will let you know. Uh, but I just wanted to cover it as a quick little starting point for all the other stories that we're going to talk about in uh, ne the next few installments of uh, Weird of the Week. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If there are any weird stories that you have or strange wildlife encounters that you personally have had or family, definitely let us know. Comment through this, uh, this feed and share it with everyone. I uh, would be awesome to discuss a few of them uh in the near future but until then thank you guys so much again for supporting the patreon and supporting rumble unknown and enjoying this weird of the week i hope you guys uh have a great time and we'll see you in the next installment well hello everybody and welcome back to another installment of the weird of the week a patreon exclusive series here for realm of unknown that gets uploaded after every weekly episode, or every normal mean feed. Uh, as I noted in the last episode, which was covering that weird coyote mange cryptid thing, uh, unknown dog here in PA. This is a sort of collection of things I'm doing catch up for last month, as well as just covering a bunch of stories that I came across that I'm like, I need to talk about all of them. And uh, if you're not you know, familiar and you're new, I will be the last one I'll talk about this on. Um, this is an exclusive series, but eventually we will be posting it onto the main feed as a sort of collection. Uh, but if you are on the podcast or if you are listening on the podcast or you're listening on the Patreon, uh, this is an exclusive series that is available for all tiers of support on the Patreon, uh, in which you will get a personal RSS link in order to listen to it on whatever podcast platform you want to. Listen to it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you want. So for today's story, I want to talk about a more science slash technological thing. Um, it's different than, you know, an alien or a UFO, cryptid, ghost type thing. This is just a bizarre science fact that I wanted to talk about. It's, a, it's from an article that comes from January 9th of this year, and it's titled... Turkmenistan's, quote, gateway to hell, which is a topic I, I kind of want to talk about eventually, is, has, or, or I should say, oh my god, I can't speak right now. I'll just read the title again. Turkmenistan's, quote, gateway to hell to be extinguished. So, uh, if you're not familiar, the um, gateway to hell is essentially a giant burning pit. I'm pretty sure it used to be like a coal mine or something that just caught fire and is now just perpetually burning for the past several years. Um, so I'm going to read the article, and then we'll discuss it a bit more. Okay, efforts are currently underway to extinguish the fiery pit, which has attracted thousands of tourists every year. Located in Darwaz, uh, or located in Darwaz, Ahal province, the burning pit received its terrifying nickname due to the ominous appearance, uh, and because it has remained on fire for more than 40 years. Originally, though originally thought to be an oil field. Okay, I was pretty close. Uh, it has been speculated that the pit has been opened by the Soviet engineers during a drilling rig that they set up that had collapsed into a large crater. 
Concerns about the release of toxic fumes, they set the gas on fire, believing that it would burn out within a week, but instead it has been burning for four decades. Now, though, Turkmenistan's president, oh god, um, Gorbin Gal Bardemakhamadov, <laughs> I will write that out because it is a long name, uh, has declared that the, quote, gateway to hell is to be extinguished, putting an end to the infernal once and for all. Uh, he is quoted as saying the following, the crater negatively affects both the environment and the health of the people living nearby, he says during a television address. Uh, we are losing valuable natural resources for which we could get significant profits and use in order to improve the well-beings of our people. Referring to the natural gas that this is currently fueling the fire. There is a snag, however, uh, as the president had previously instructed experts to find a way to extinguish the fire all the way back in 2010. Uh, but they were not able to find a solution or come up with a way in order to enact that plan. So whether or not things actually progress from this point onwards um, in order to, you know, try to extinguish things, uh, who knows? It's very, if, if you're not familiar, it's very reminiscent of, uh, let me see if I can look up the name real quick. Um... Centralia, that's what it is. It's very reminiscent of Centralia, PA, uh, which is another story that I might cover, I might not, I don't know. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, it's a town here in Pennsylvania that is a very similar story, except for I believe it is a coal, a coal mine, not a natural gas line, that caught fire and has been burning for decades upon decades, and multiple attempts to try to extinguish the flames have not worked <laughs> um it has had various results but ultimately no one lives there i think there's like two people who live nearby um but you you can't live there like it, pe it's just toxic fumes burning coal there's fire coming out of like the street uh, it's just bad and uh in this case the gate to hell is pretty much very you know the same story it's some sort of uh mining operation that went bad or experimental operation that went bad that has caught fire and has been burning and no one can live there it attracts tourism here um which is kind of good i'm pretty sure most of them are like helicopter tours for the most part uh i'm pretty sure they they won't let you walk up to a burning pit or maybe they do i don't know this is the soviet old soviet union <laughs> um current day Tur turkmenistan i don't know how they act with tourism laws um, for all I know, they could be just, you know, not caring <laughs> at all what happens to people who come here. Uh, but it's a story I wanted to talk about. It's a bit of a quick one in comparison to the rest of uh, things to talk about. Obviously, there's not a whole lot of speculation or theory crafting that you can really play into this one because it is like it's it's a bizarre thing. It's a real life bizarre science thing that, you know, really Maybe the history of the Gateway to Hell could cover a whole episode, but naturally, like, it, this article, other stuff like it, like, it won't really have enough substance to last, like, a 20-minute episode. Uh, so I want to talk about it here. Um, maybe someday we'll talk about it and maybe lump it in with other weird pits or gateways to hell. I don't know. We'll see. But I wanted to talk about it here. I hope you guys did enjoy. Uh, if you you know, had a good time, tell some stories of your own, uh, maybe if you've heard of some local gateways to hell, because there are a lot, there are definitely a lot, within a variety of different ways, I know there's pits, there's gates, there's doors, stairwells, tunnels, uh, houses, portals, it's all sorts of weirdness when it comes to hell, uh, and if there are any local ones within your town, or stories that you have of your own, or with family, please feel free to let me know, I'd definitely love to listen to it, and uh, leave the comment down below. Uh, the article will be posted in the description if you want to check it out. So feel free to uh, see if there's any updates. Like always, I will add it onto the thread. But until then, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this installment of the Weird of the Week. And remember to stay spooky in the meantime.